Well, uh, hi, welcome everybody to the Free University of Glastonbury. Uh, this is the second day and we've had a great programme so far. Uh, my name's Tony White, I'm an author and I'm chair of a, a radio station in London called Resonance FM. And, uh, my favourite radio station, what a radio station. <laughs> Resonance FM, that is General 104.4 FM. Um, you still got that bird who plays the saxophone in the phone boxes. So she, I think she got so. pregnant and she had a baby and then she took the baby in the phone box and still played it. That's it, uh, it's, it's kind of mobile saxophone yeah. playing and, and recording. It's, it's uh, yeah, great, a great station. And uh, how, how do I introduce the man who needs no introduction? Yeah. Yeah. Sucks, uh, with, it's a great privilege. Oh, fucking knobhead, that's what I'm going to use me as. Fucking knobhead it. <laughs> a great, uh, great honour to have I like the t-shirt here, Bono, play your sax. I was going to get a big banner last night. Hey. I was going to have a banner and on it I was going to write Haven or Hellman's. <laughs> I thought I'd cover myself with mayonnaise. <laughs> well, I went to see Primal Scream instead. Yeah. That was, uh, did you see that? That was absolutely cool. brilliant. Right. <laughs> Carry on, carry on. Well, what, so is that the best, the best gig you've seen uh, this weekend yet? Yeah? Well, I only saw, well, I saw four, but no, BB King was sensational yesterday. The Wu Tang Clan were good, but went on a bit. Jimmy Cliff? Jimmy Cliff was fucking great, yeah, yeah. I can see clearly now the rain is gone, but it fucking didn't go, did it? <laughs> Man like me this afternoon. You what, mate? Man like me this afternoon. Sorry? Man like me. A man like me, a big plane? Yeah, playing about an hour. About now? Oh, Noah, well. and I was playing down Shangri-La. So, 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 what are you up to apart from wading through uh, acres of uh, shit to be here for everyone at the Free University? Only to be with you. <laughs> Only to pay my tax. <laughs> and they still haven't found what I'm hiding from them. <laughs> How, how did the protest, how did, did, were you up at the protest well, yesterday? Well, no, this was um, Chamba Wamba, all came oh. on stage wearing these. Okay. And at the end of their gig, they flogged about 100 new shirts. So, cool. Um, I'm, what I'm up to, yeah, I'm uh, Tony, isn't it? Mm. You're an author, and uh, <laughs> you never said the other bit. Uh, yeah, I'm, uh, I'm, a, I'm a, an author, I've written novels, including a, a novel called Foxy T, a novel I read yesterday called Charlie Uncle Not Tango. You wrote a novel that you read yesterday? <laughs> I did. That's amazing. <laughs> I finished my first novel last week. I'm going to read another one next year. <laughs> that reminds me of the Ryan Geek story. They said to him, um, Ryan, how much did you have to do with the writing of your autobiography? He said, writing? I never even read the fucking thing. <laughs> so it's a rare opportunity. Obviously yeah. wouldn't now. Um, no, sorry, to get back on the straight and narrow, mind. There is no straight and narrow. That's very true. If there was such a thing, and I could get on it. Um, I've been doing a one-man show, Tony. Have you heard any talk of this? I'm, I'm doing a one-man show, sort of anecdotal, and I'm um, playing the piano a little bit. Story of my life. I did four shows, sort of, in the suburbs of London, and I'm, I'm going to bring it back to the world in October, because it went relatively well. And, uh, yeah. Get on with it. It's brilliant. So, uh, um, so what bits of your life are you talking about in the show? Well, it's exactly what happened, right? It's in January this year, on the 13th, I was 50 years old. Hey. Thank you. Yep, 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 yep. <laughs> I became the moody swifty. <laughs> the bent nifty. And just previous to that, my two lovely daughters are here, Scarlett and Viva, moved out of my house, right? So I'm 50, my kids have left home. Huge mystical holes are opening up in my brain. And I was lying in the bath on the morning of my 50th birthday and I heard this terrible crash. And my cat tried to jump on a glass shelf above the sink and fell off and, and died. And it was lying there on the floor, like perfect, no blood, no nothing, you know. Member, my favourite cat man. The cat that caught 12 mice in one day. The cat that saw off that horrible fucking cat from next door. And the cat <laughs> used to climb up the vine at the front of my house and knock on the fucking bedroom window when we wanted to come in. Hey, on my 50th birthday, right? I just thought, God, you can go fuck yourself. I've had enough now. I started to think about reevaluating my life. 
But it's strange, you know, because huge things can happen, but um, it was the death of my cat that really got me thinking about, I suppose, fatality and um, life, really. So, uh, and so, uh, you're going to be touring this show again in the autumn? I'm hoping to, yes. I'm, I'm, I'm going to do um, three weeks in Orpington, and then I'm going to go to Bridlington, and then I'm going to go to Madlington. No, no. <laughs> I'm hoping to do a little run in the theatre in London, yeah, yeah. Uh, maybe the Soho Theatre is what we're talking about at the moment, and then go on tour with it. Any plans for, for a, the record of the show as well? Or? Um, will there be any record of the show? When they, when they dig out those pyramids in 2464, will there be a record of my show? Of course there will, of course there will. No, I don't know. I mean, I'm not really that far down the line, but what was very rewarding and... Um, you know, I felt a great deal of achievement because it took a long time to write and to learn an hour and a half worth of words, even though they are your own anecdotes. <laughs> was very hard work. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, we're very, very privileged to have uh, Suggs here on the stage. It's your chance to ask, uh, oh, yes, ask a question. I'm fucking brilliant, mate. Thank you. <laughs> any, any, any questions for, for Suggs? Go on, mate. As we, older, as we get older, like Mick Jaggers and all of that pop stars, what do you think of them getting older and continuing to perform into their seventies and eighties? I mean, well, it's very interesting. I remember that, like when we were, you know, when I was in my teens. In fact, funny enough, because they just used baggy trousers in a beer advert. Right? Yeah. And I remember they dug out a quote when I was twenty-two, where I said, "There's no way I'll be still singing baggy trousers when I'm thirty." <laughs> I'm probably 50 now. And rock on. I know the Stones, man. I mean, good luck to them buggers. I always used to think, man, they're so far down the line from us and they still keep going. So there is no end to it, I don't think. But I do think uh, one illumination for me about being a pop star and being old was the Buena Vista Social Club that I played at the Barbican when Ferrer Abraham was still alive. And he must have been 83 then. And he came on stage with two walking sticks. And I thought, oh, fuck, what we let ourselves in for it? The music started and he fucked the walking sticks in the air and started dancing. Man. With a white cheese cutter hat and Oxford bags and all that. And what I saw was somebody who could still vibrate, but with dignity. You know what I mean? I think he could still vibrate, but with dignity. That's what I should suggest. It's possible for me, I hope. I didn't show much of it last night, I hasten to. <laughs> Are there any witnesses here? <laughs> Maybe not. Thank goodness. Um, and, uh, the, um, so, so we can look forward to the, your hundredth birthday celebrations and, and still, uh, still making music. Fifty years time. I don't know about that. I, I nearly had a stroke last night. I'm think my days are numbered. <laughs> Might have a fifty-first anniversary. Um, well. I mean, all I can say is, you know, I still very much enjoy what I do, and, you know, the band that I'm in, Madness, we were friends, thank you. What about the Covflex? Coventry. The Covflex? Coventry. But he's, yeah, yeah. Fucking, I'm not, he's got to be get out of that, he's got the Specials t-shirt. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, yeah, the Specials, man. Have you asked me about the Specials? Oh, yeah, yeah, I've got confused. Sorry, I'll tell you right. what, man, I remember <laughs> the first time i seen the specials, they came to the Hope and, Hope and Anchor, a pub we used to play in, in Islington. And this bloke with really bad teeth. <laughs> Alright London, we the specials. <laughs> and after the gig I got chatting to him and we started getting along very well and his name was Jerry Dammers. And in those days, when you were on the road, the best chance you had of finding somewhere decent to stay was if you pulled a bird after the gig. And with them teeth, he ended up kipping on my mum's sofa. <laughs> but it was Jerry Demers, man, and he kipped on my sofa. He went, I'm going to start a label. I went, yeah, right. As he reached for his professional-looking briefcase to unleash a, a mouldy orange and copied the melody maker. I said, do you want to sign to our label? I said, what with t uh, Jerry? You ain't even got a pencil, man. <laughs> But not too long afterwards, he did phone me up, he phoned me up and he said, Tugs, I've done it, I've started my label, and it's called Two Tone. I said, what, after your teeth? 
<laughs> and that really was the beginning of our career. Of course it was. That's the fucking one, man. That's mental. <laughs> Thank you. I'm the Mike and he's the Bernie of the winter. <laughs> And, and uh, how, how you need two how, times, you know. How's it going? How's it going with Madness? Because uh, everyone in the audience will know Madness. Madness released a brilliant album a couple of years ago called The Liberty of Norton yes. Folgate, yes. uh, which we listened to on the way down here. It's a fantastic record. Uh, unpicking a little area of London. Unpicking your your relationship with London. Uh, what's going What's going on in the you know uh, with with the band at the moment? We're still on speaking terms, just okay. about. Good start, good start. But no, I was going to say before that, um, you know, we were friends from when we were at school. You know, that's the great joy of the band that I'm in. You know, we are friends. And so all that stuff we did and are still doing, if it has any res resonance, it's because resonance. It's because we were genuinely having a really good time, and we still are, you know. So if we're not having a good time, we don't do anything. And if we are, we do something again. But the Liberty of Norton Folgate, yeah, was um, an area of Spitalfields, which was a free state just outside the city of London until 1903, man. It was two square miles of the city of London that weren't under the jurisdiction of the rest of London. And, and unfortunately, in 1903, when they capitulated to the metropolis, um, all the records of it went. But I just happened to read about it in a book. Um, <coughs> And I thought it was a very interesting subject for a song, if not an album. Oh, sorry, it's like it's all the mad people and the poets, and all the people that actually couldn't get into the city walls would congregate. And um, I've always thought about London, of course, because I live in London. I mean, it's funny though, um, we were saying, should we do an album that's themed on London? And our guitarist Chris <coughs> said, what do you think all the other fucking songs are written are about? <laughs> But, you know, it's not because I think London's any better than anywhere else, it's just it's the fact where I live. And because I like to think about songs that have been observed in everyday life, like the Kinks and Ian Drury, the people that I looked up to as lyricists. So, um, you know, what we write mostly is about things that go on in London. <laughs> 